<clears throat> I discovered something very important today. I went to the gym, got done, and I washed my mask out, and it's still wet, and you can't breathe through it when it's wet. So I have to switch. Um, so I'm going to try lecturing two different ways today. Oh, by the way, the Zoom that was recorded from last time is posted on Blackboard. So you can watch the whole thing or fast forward through to the parts that you need to look at. I don't know why you'd need to see it again, but you can fill in the spots maybe that you missed. <coughs> um, so I'm going to continue lecturing with the equations of motion on a PDF on the screen today. Uh, and the main reason for that is the equations are so long that to try to write them on just this one screen or this one board I think would be hard. <coughs> But then for the second half of the lecture, I'm going to try writing on the board, and we'll see how it looks. You guys are welcome to zoom in and look at the video on that. And I did this in 324 yesterday, and it seemed to work pretty well. So we'll try that. Um, and I do have a tablet on order, so I'll probably be lecturing with that some of the time as well. That's right, you're on stage. Um, so this. I will admit is probably my least favorite lecture because it's really tedious. But it's, again, it's important that we go through some of these equations and you can see where the assumptions go into it. I'll go slowly. Normally I write this very carefully on the board. Um, these are my no hand notes that I usually refer to, so it may be a little bit messy. But I'll try to organize it and I'll let you write down the pieces and parts and we'll walk through how it works. Okay. So you can look at the shared screen on Zoom, or you can look at the, the projector, whichever way looks best for you. And in fact, the first thing we need to do is kind of what partially was your assignment last time. Not a homework, but I ask you to start looking at this cross product. And so where we ended up is this force equation, which looks real familiar. It's the, accelerate, um, the mass times acceleration over here, but we have this extra term because we're in the body fixed axis system. It's equal to the mass times the gravity, the aerodynamic and thrust forces. And we ended with this equation last time, but you're gonna need that. So if you didn't get it written down last time, write it down now. And what we're going to do is substitute the vectors in for the velocity, omega, velocity, gravity, and the forces. And you're going to take this cross product so you can see where these extra weird terms that show up in the equations of motion and the body fixed axis show up. All right, so everybody got this written down? Is it big enough on the screen where you can see it? Again, if you need to on your own personal computer or the computer in front of you, you can log in to the Zoom stream and see this right in front of you on your screen as well. Oh, by the way, I forgot to do this last time, but I would like, when you leave, there's a bottle here, spray some on one of the towels and just wipe down your station where you've been. Um, the table mainly. Uh, you can do the keyboard as best you can. And that's for you to wipe down your station, but also wipe your hands down. There, uh, You've been watching the news, right? There's been several major universities that have gone online. Um, University of North Carolina, Notre Dame, Michigan uh, have all sent everybody home. A lot of other universities are saying we can do this, and WSU believes we can do it as well in person. Um, so we're just making sure that everybody wears masks, washes your hands. You know, obviously, don't touch your face after you've touched other stuff, and let's keep everybody healthy, and we'll be good this semester. All right. So everybody got that written down while I've been given the health advisories here? OK, so what we're going to do is plug in, and you're going to do this. 
the velocity is ui plus vj plus wk. And sometimes it's a little hard to distinguish w from omega, especially if it's a lowercase w. This is w. And then we need to plug in omega vector as p, q, and r. And so this is the cross product that you need to take right here. Because everything else is easy. We plug in u, v, and w, and that's it. We don't have to do anything. This just those are the vector components. Here's g, x, g, y, and g, z. F, a, x, F, a, y, and F, z. Those are just the forces, and we'll figure what these are out later in chapter three. Uh, you can imagine like the z force is going to be the lift and the x-force is gonna be the drag, so on. And then here's the thrust forces. So you guys do this cross product to give you something to do. Instead of just me doing it on the board, this gets you actively involved in the lecture. Steve's partial. I'm oh, sorry, what? Are those derivatives partial or partial derivatives? Uh, that's my bad notation. Those are total just derivatives because u is just a function of time. It's just d, yeah, it's a derivative, sorry. So you guys working on the cross product? Are you doing a brute force or are you putting it in the determinant thing? So this is brute force method. This is putting it in the determinant. You should be getting these terms and you're gonna get Q times W, V times R. So when it, all of the I components have the because it's a cross product, all of the non-I components of the vectors. And so that's what goes in to the equation here. And then we grab all the I components across and put them into an equation, and that's the X-force equation. And then we grab all the JA components, and that's the Y-force equation, and then the Z components are the Z-force equation. Did everybody get this for the cross product? Double check my work. So you guys have that cross product, and then these are the body fixed force equations. 
and they're in your book. Their equation is 1.19. But again, like everything else, I'll ask you to write those down. Because when you write them, you go, okay, look, here's the X force equation. Here's I, right? So here's du by dt. Well, that's obvious. That's the forward velocity, which is in the I direction. So that's the acceleration. Mass times change in velocity is acceleration in the X direction. And then you got gx, so that's the gravitational component in the X direction. Here's the aerodynamic and thrust forces in the X direction. So you look at this equation, and even if it weren't labeled, you could say, well, that's obviously the force equation in the X direction. Weird terms here, V times R, W times Q. They don't fit the normal force equals mass times acceleration. Those are from that omega cross V term that we got because this is in the body fixed axis system and that axis system is rotating. So that's why you get the R and the Q in here. Same thing for the other equations, the Y force equation, you get the acceleration in the Y direction, forces in the Y direction, and then you get these extra terms due to the body fixed axis system. And we're going to use these equations a lot throughout the semester. Because these describe the motion. Just like if you have a mass and you put a force on it, you want to calculate the motion. That's what these equations are. The forces on the airplane create the motion in the X and the Y and the Z direction. All right, here comes the fun part. Are you ready? He goes through this in the book, but I feel like he leaves out a few steps here and there. And so I'm going to wade through this. I'm going to force you to watch it one time. This is the moment equation right here that we derived. It's really just R cross the force equation. Remember what R is? R is that vector from the origin O of the inertial reference frame to that little piece on the airplane. And then the integral just says, well, we add up all of the pieces. So this is R cross F, R cross F, and R cross dr by dt. So this is the, the angular uh, acceleration here. So it's not that bad of an equation looking at it here, except that, again, just like the previous, we don't want it in terms of that vector pointing from O. We want it in terms of the little r on board the airplane. And maybe I should draw that picture up here on the board. To remind you, that's the inertial reference frame. Here's our airplane up here. It has its own body fixed axis system. And we have our little mass element here. And then we have a vector that points to some point P. And then we have a vector R that points on board the airplane from P to the inertial frame. All right, so the hard part is that we have to plug in R prime is RP plus little r. So everywhere you see an R prime up here, we're going to plug that in. And so the first two terms I want you to write down are these here.
and this is the first term right here with that substitution because here's rp prime and here's little r And can you see it on the screen or should I zoom in a bit? Why are we not taking the integral of RP prime? Oh, I need to point that out. The reason is that you can pull this out is RP is this vector from O to P, and it doesn't matter where the little mass element is on the airplane. The integral, remember, is over all of these little mass elements. This integral, this term is constant no matter which mass element we're looking at in the integral. So it's, I mean, you can just think of it as a number, right? Five inside the integral. So you can always pull five outside the integral because it's constant with respect to the volume. So you notice I've got noted here that this is zero, the second term. And the reason for that, this is little r crossed with the weight of each individual mass element. So if we have a mass element here and then another mass element here, and the weight is acting down on both of those, the net moment is zero. Those two cancel each other out, right? Because R is positive, R cross, and then the R to the other one is negative. So if we choose P to be the center of mass, which we did for the force equation, then that integral is zero because for every little piece of mass that's on the right side of P, there's an equivalent on the left side and they cancel each other out. Remember the barbell example, I just showed a mass here and a mass here, and if we chose P to be in the middle, then you get gravity force and you get no net moment on that. So that's good, we can knock that term out, right? All right, how about the next part? Now we're going to take this term. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to plug in RP plus R for this R. And again, we can pull RP prime out because RP doesn't depend upon the integral, the DS or the DV. All right, and I want you to start circling terms. I want you to take, I'm going to use some colors, but I want you to take this term here and put a big circle around it. I want you to take this term and put a big circle around it. And we're going to keep track of those circled terms. All right, so the last term that we need to take care of is this one here. And just like the other ones, we've got two R's here, so we're just going to look at the first one and plug in R prime for that. And so that's why we get an R P prime here and an R here.
All right, is everybody caught up? So you got your green circles drawn. I know you can't do green, so just make it a circle. And you've got these two terms written down, right? Because all we did was we plugged in R, P prime, and R for the R up here. All right, so now we have to deal with these two terms. So let me pick a different color. This term is going to go to these two. And what we're going to do here is we have the derivative d by dt of a product. So we have to take the derivative of the first part times the second part, and the derivative of the second part times the first part. So this is the derivative of the first part right here, and then here's the derivative of the second part. Notice in doing this, we've said that the derivative of the density doesn't change <coughs> with time because we said it's a rigid airplane. So there's that assumption showing up again, and the assumption of the point P being the center of mass has helped us out already. All right, we still haven't done anything with this term on the right. We're going to do that in a second. But before we get to that, we've got these two terms. I want you to circle this term. Yeah. No, it's cross product because you just you just uh, product rule it in. Yeah. All right. Before we get to this term, the next thing I want you to do, I'm going to do it in a red, is I want you to put a square around this term. And then I want you to put a diamond thing around this term. All right, so everybody got theirs coded with the circles and squares and diamonds? Okay, the last thing we need to do is this term, and we're going to plug in RP plus R for the R inside this thing here. So that's the last substitution of that we have to do. And we're going to get the first term has the drp by dt, so that's this dr by dt of the first term of the substitution. And again, we can pull that outside the interval because rp doesn't depend upon where you are on the airplane. And then the little r term goes down here. So again, the two terms from this come from just substituting in for r prime. All right, so here we've got this derivative outside, and if you look at this interval, 
Here we've got R times dm. So we got an integral over r's to dm's, and it's the same situation up here with the dumbbells that I drew. You've got r pointing to the right to a mass, and you got r pointing to the left to a mass, and the r is plus going to the right, and the r is negative going to the left, and so if you integrate over all those pluses and minuses, you get zeros. So this is knocked out because we chose P to be the center of gravity. And again, it really is that, although it's a distributed mass, we have the same amount of mass on the right of the CG as we do on the left of the CG, and so those, that term just cancels out. And then I want you to draw another box, that's a lousy box, another box about this term. All right, so good news. We've knocked out this term. We've knocked out this one. And I'm going to tell you that on the next page, I'm going to show you that we can knock this one out. That's zero. And on the next page, I'm going to show you that the three green terms added together are zero. So they get knocked out. And all that's left are the red boxes. And why is it so simple? Because we said P is the center of gravity and it's a rigid body so there's no derivatives of the density or the masses. So maybe that's a huge part of what I, why I wade through this is that you appreciate why you choose that center of mass and why everything's done about the center of mass. All right, anybody still working on this? Drawing their pictures and their squares and triangles? Or diamonds, sorry, that's a diamond, isn't it? Okay, look at the green circle terms. This is RP cross something. This is RP cross something. This is RP cross something. So let's factor out the RP and then add all of these together. In fact, it's this plus this equals this, right? So that's what I'm going to show you on the next page is those three terms. RP cross, and then I wrote those three terms in here. And I say that's zero because this whole thing is just the force equation. And the force equation, we've already said, holds so this term plus this term has to equal this term so they cancel each other out. Right? Look at it. It is the force equation. It's mass times gravity plus aerodynamic thrust forces added together. So this is the sum of the forces is equal to d by dt, the derivative of velocity. So this is mass times acceleration. So this really is the force equation. So you can cancel those terms out. All right, so the very last thing we have to do is that thing that was in the orange diamond. And all that amounts to is doing this substitution again in there, RP plus R. And so you get an RP derivative and you get an R derivative here. And here you notice we got the derivative of a vector, I'm sorry, we get a vector crossed with itself. And we know that that's zero. If you have A cross A, it's zero. 
And then over here, we have the integral of that same thing, the r's times the dm. So you got the same mass on the right, same mass on the left. And so we knock this term out as well. All right, so I know that was arduous. But the nice thing is with those assumptions, we get a nice simple equation And so this equation says R across forces is moments. So we just say, let's collect it all together and call it the aerodynamic and thrust forces. Right, R cross F. We get applied aerodynamic and thrust moments. And then this side is R cross M times velocity. And this is what's called angular momentum. And we sometimes call that the H vector. So really the momentum equation, the moment equation says some of the moments equals the change in angular momentum, which we knew from dynamics. So in some sense we could have started here, but we would have had to have derived all of that stuff before. Uh, and I wanted to go through it just one more time so you see where all that comes from. Right, your classical definition of angular momentum is R cross mass times velocity, right? So that's all this is. It's just each little mass element crossed with the vector r, and then it's all added up. All right, we still have a little bit more work to do because we are, need to express the derivatives of this r vector in the rotating axis frame, just like we did in the force equation. And so remember that the derivative of a vector that we used last time, I'm gonna write on the board here, the derivative of a vector in that rotating axis frame is the derivative in that x, y, z frame plus omega cross a, right? That's where we got those extra terms in the force equation and in the moment equation we get a lot more extra terms because we have the derivative here and the derivative here. All right, so the book goes through this in arduous detail, and I don't want to do that. It gets fairly complicated. Um, but when it's all said and done, you get this equation, and you can see where these terms come from. We got the derivative, the double derivative, so you get essentially when you've got the vector here, you got dA 
by dt, and then you got a derivative of that. And so you're going to get just from that part there, sorry, this should be this way. Just from this part, you're going to get that double term with the omega cross, and then inside here, you've got So you get a lot of stuff from this. You get this derivative distributed through all of these three things, and then the omega cross distributed into all three of those. And in fact, that's where you, you can see you get omega cross, omega cross something. And that's what you see on the board. Is we get r cross omega dot cross r, omega cross omega cross r. But it's a lot simpler than we started out with, with all those terms that we eventually were able to knock out, right? All right, so the last piece is substituting in the vectors and carrying out these cross products. And that's your first homework assignment, is to just carry out that part, yeah. This here. That's just this thing operating on this, so it's omega cross this stuff. Yeah, that's the best way I can think to write it. So the last step is your homework. You're going to plug in R and omega. Uh, they walk through this actually in the book pretty well. You'll need this vector identity here which is a bit fuzzy, so I'm going to write it on the board. It tells you a slick way to do that, crop, that triple product. And honestly, it's about the same amount of work to do it either with that special identity or just brute forcing the cross products, the triple cross product. The good thing is that you have the answer right here and it's in the book. We get a rolling moment equation, a pitching moment equation, and a yawing moment equation. Along the way, you'll need to follow along in the book. They, derive, they define these inertial terms, I, X, X, I, Y, Y, I, Z. I know you've seen those before in dynamics and in spacecraft dynamics, right? But these are terms, all of the, the X's and Y's and Z's in the integral here end up in those definitions. So look in your book, they've defined all of those in there. And so what you'll do is you'll plug these in and then you'll collect terms that will then collect into these I's. And that's how they're defined. And the reason that we name them is that you can pre-calculate them and then you don't have to carry those integrals around in your equation all the time. It's just a number for the rigid body. Page number for the equation. This equation is 1.25. Page 21. And they're also on page 11. So either a page 11 or 10 pages later, page 21.
All right, so this homework problem, number one, is the hardest one of the whole bunch on the assignment. The other three are really easy. So this one will probably take two pages, and then the next one each will take maybe a half a page, because all you're doing is taking the equations and specializing them for certain situations. In other words, one of them says, well, what does this equation look like if it was for a bullet? Well, the bullet has a lot of axis of symmetry, right? And so you can knock out some terms. How are we doing on time? Tell you what, let's take a two minute break. Everybody stand up, walk around, and then we'll talk about Euler angles here in a minute, and then we'll be done. Can you what? Uh, it's posted on Blackboard. No, it's doing a week. I know it's hard to hear with these masks on. Are you able to understand me fairly well? It's okay? In this room? I, I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time following what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if that, if that room is scheduled or not. What's the number? It's three fifty-five. Three fifty-five. So it's just like this one, only a third floor. Yeah, but like the, the small Yeah, I see. Then I don't know. I can go out and see if there's something. Yeah, yeah. If you want to, the I don't know if I can schedule it or not. It may be a lab. Um, I'll look into it. No, there's just homework one. What's homework two? Oh no, it's it's all combined together. That's it's on Blackboard. It's both of those things. Yeah, all of that's due next Thursday. Yeah. No, there are problems in the book. Sorry, he's asking me about the notes on the bottom. I used to make the assignments in class. It's on Blackboard. Problem number one is the derivation I just talked to you about. The other problems are in the textbook, and it's listed on the Blackboard sheet. So all four of these problems are due. Yeah. yeah. Dr. Steck. Now for the next part, I'm going to write on the board quite a bit. So if you're sitting too far away and you can't see it well, get logged into Zoom real quick. Because on the screen, you notice that it's inverted because it's just showing my screen here where it flips it around. And I haven't found a good fix for that. The what? Yeah, the mirror of my video and watch what happens. I'll try it again, but the other day it didn't seem to help what we were doing. You're talking about this one, right? So what about the people on Zoom? 
because I'm concerned that now that anybody on Zoom is going to show it flipped. Is that right or not? It looks Are you seeing perfect it okay? for us. Yeah, it looks fine. You should be seeing this video, are you not? Yes. Let's see what you're seeing. Yeah, so it looks okay? Yeah. Looks fuzzy. That's the camera quality. Need a yeah, just a little fuzzy, but I can it's still make everything out. Camera, but... You need 4K. <laughs> it's 2020. Next time, maybe I'll try my iPad, because I think they have a better camera. See, it's clearer on here. Why is that? Oh, well, let me check one thing. Now, oh, high def is enabled. How does it look up on the screen? Decent, readable, legible at least. Is it better up there than it is? This is blurrier than that. Maybe you can just like make the camera a bit closer. If I refresh. Bigger is always better, right? There you go. Is that helping or not? Is that better? Except now it's kind of tilted, isn't it? All right. Let me know what you think of this. All right, do you remember Euler angles? It's your favorite thing in the world, right? So I do need to show this on the screen here. All right, so remember the Euler angles are a way to represent the relation, the, the orientation of a body fixed axis in the airplane relative to the inertial earth fixed frame. And it's through a series of three rotations. And you do, first you do a rotation about the Z axis, which is pointing down in the airplane. So that's what they're showing you here in, in your book. So you do a rotation through psi. and it's in this direction. And so you go from this orientation to a new X2, Y2 axis system, right? This should look familiar from 415. So that gets the airplane oriented in yaw, and then you pitch about the Y axis through an angle phi. So that gets the angle pitched correctly. 
and then you bank through an angle. Sorry, theta is the pitch. Don't know what I'm thinking of. Theta is the pitch, and then you bank through an angle phi. I don't know why they have a phi there. That's a typo. Cross that out. So yaw, pitch, roll, right? So the transformations for that are matrices that transform either from body to earth or earth to body. So if this is in the body fixed axis system, you multiply it by three matrices that represent those three rotations. And then you end up with earth fixed velocities. So we have those force equations that have derivatives of u, v, and w. We can integrate those and get x, y, and z position of the airplane, or we can plug them in here, transform to the Earth axis system, and then integrate these velocities, and we can track the airplane in the Earth fixed axis system, which means we can follow its flight path. And in fact, those equations of motion, those force equations, along with the moment equations, are used in flight simulators to do exactly that. You have initial conditions of the airplane sitting on a runway at, say, mid-continent. You start the integration. It goes down the runway. It takes off. You can calculate these velocities in Earth fixed axis system and figure out where you are in the Earth and figure out, well, what am I looking at out the cockpit? And that's what you show on the computer. We'll talk more about that later. <clears throat> so what goes in these transformations are these matrices. And these are in your 514, your 514 book, Flight Dynamics. They should also be in your 415 book. And they're in the book that we're currently using. Where is it glaring? Oh, that slash through there? I'll see what I can do. You would think I could dim it to a certain level, huh? Can you turn off the light in the room? Is it that light that's glaring or is it a different one? You think it's one of these lights? Because I can turn these lights on here and shut those down. Does that help? OK. And if you want to go the other way, so this is body to earth. If you want to go earth to body, you just do all this backwards. And so earth to body is going to be psi first, and then theta, and then phi. So you do this matrix first. I'm oh, sorry, you do this matrix first, this one second, and this one third. And you have to go in the opposite direction 
<coughs> in these equations. So you just put a minus sign <coughs> in all of the terms in here, flip the order, and that's, <coughs> excuse me, that gives you the transformation in the other direction. Does that make sense? So you just plug negative signs in everywhere, and then you flip the order of the matrices, and that's, it, it takes you from Earth to body. All right, so the other thing that we need to talk about is how do you transform um, using Euler angles. And we think about terms like that. Psi dot is a yaw rate. Theta dot is a pitch rate. Phi dot is a bank rate or a roll rate. But there, in terms of these Euler rates, and we've talked about angular velocities as being P, Q, and R in the i, j, k axis. This is in the Euler axes. This is psi dot about that initial x, theta dot about the initial y, whereas these are all in the body fix. So these are Euler rates and these are body rates. So there must be some kind of relationship between these two because they're both angular rates of the airplane. And so the way you do that is you need to write each of these rotations in the IJK axis system. And so that's exactly what we do, is we write psi dot as its rotation about that z-axis, right? The initial z-axis that we started out with in the earth fix axis system. And the way you figure out what this is, is you take the Euler transformation to get that psi dot, <coughs> which is in the z direction, this is in the z axis, and you run it through the theta and the phi transformation. I'm going to start abbreviating here. <clears throat> and that's going to give you what this is in the IJK axis system. So you got psi dot in the two axis system and you go through theta and phi and then you get it into the IJK components and then theta dot is just this matrix times the theta dot vector in the J3 axis system. And then phi, you don't have to do anything with because it's already in the I axis system. The vector here. Uh, 
<clears throat> if you multiply this out and you multiply this out and then you collect all the i, j, and k terms, So there's all the I terms. There's all the J terms. There's all the k terms. So this is a result of multiplying that thing out and then putting the i, j, k terms here. Here's multiplying this out, putting the i, j, k terms, and then the phi dot just shows up here. And then this has to be p, because we're just matching this equation to this one. The i terms have to be p, the j terms have to be q, and the k terms have to be r. And this is in your text as well. But I want you to go through that multiplication because this is homework problem number four. Is to, exact, is to do exactly this. In fact, I've done 90% of the homework problem here. You multiply those matrices out and you get the i, j, and k components that show here. Multiply those out, you get the components and you just add it all up and you get this result. And these equations are called the kinematic equations. Because it's not Newton's law, it's not derivatives of velocities, it's just a relationship of how this, the motion in terms of the Euler rates is related to the motion in terms of the body rate. So there's not dynamics there, it's just kinematics, which is the connection of motion. So for the homework, problem number one, plan on a lot of time for that. I'd say probably an hour. For this, I've done 90% of it. It's also in the book. By the way, don't just write down this and then write down the answer, I want you to show me the work. Makes sense, right? Otherwise you're not doing anything. It shows it in the book as well. You can follow it through in the book on how to do that. And then the other two problems are literally eight minutes each. Kinematic equations, this is page Summary is on page 21. Let me make sure I'm pointing you to the right set. Yes. In fact, on page 21 are the force equations, the moment equations, and the kinematic equations. So we've really developed nine equations. We have three force, three moment, and three kinematic. And that's on page 21.
And there I've finally figured out how to get it up there. Here's the three force equations. Three showing there. Is it not shared on your screen? Oh, it's got this other thing. Why did it do that? Right. I think I clicked the wrong thing. Are you seeing it now? Yeah, so here's the three force equations, the three moment equations, and then the three kinematic equations. All right, that's all that I want to do today. So let's call it good. I think we're about out of time anyway. Thank you, Dr. Steck.